Have you ever worried about to run out of battery on your smartphone, laptop or even to power some lights in remote places? Never worry about it again. In this video, I will show you how I built a solar and wind charged power station. It's just a perfect option for charging devices or powering some lights in remote places like camping, hiking or countryside. You will never run out of battery again with one of this. Let's take a look into the project details. This power station is composed by four different parts. The first part is the solar panels. Besides producing energy using the sunlight, they can track the light direction to increase its energy generation efficiency. The second one is the wind turbine that has a design that allows it to self-start at low wind speeds and acquire a high rotation speed when comparing with another turbine designs. The third part is the controller and battery pack. It has two USB and one 12 volt output ports, battery level indicator, LED lights and a control panel to turn on and off all of the systems. The fourth part is the main body. It uses a PVC pipe for its construction, holds all the electronics and makes just the right support to let the power station stable. In a sunny day with some wind, this configuration can charge itself in under than 6 hours. It also has the capability of charging 2 to 3 smartphones or power 1 9 watt LED light during almost 7 straight hours. Before we proceed, if you are enjoying this video and would like to see more content like this, don't forget to follow the channel. All the plans to build a power station just like this one are in the video description. Let's take a look into the building process. Taking a look into the wind turbine building process, there are several different designs of wind turbines nowadays. They are comprehended in two major groups, the horizontal axis wind turbines and the vertical axis wind turbines. Both of them have advantages and disadvantages. The horizontal ones are really good options for high scale energy generation, but they demand a constant airflow through it, called laminar airflow and something that gives the right direction to the blades, as it can only receive wind in one direction. The vertical ones are good options for small scale energy generation. They work just fine with wind coming from different directions, called turbulent airflow, and have low maintenance necessity. This was the reason why I chose the vertical axis wind turbines for this project. The turbine is mainly made from PVC pipe and PVC boards, with one end connected to a bearing wheel and the other end connected to a 12V DC motor using a flange. To start the building process, all the parts are glued together using super glue. This will help to position everything in place, making it steady and strong enough to proceed for the next steps, that will be reinforcing step. All the joints need to be reinforced with some epoxy glue. This way, the wind turbine structure will be strong enough to face some wind. Concluding these steps, we are ready to go to the next one, the solar panel systems. The solar panels used in this project are 6 volt and 200 milliamps each. As it uses 8 solar panels, the whole system can provide 12 volts at 800 milliamps at maximum output. As presented before, it also has a solar tracking device. The tilt pan is the responsible to move the panels to the right direction. We use four light dependent resistors to measure the light incidence and knows where to move the panels. To explain a little bit how does it works, we need to know what a resistor is. A resistor is an electronic device that can block part of the energy that passes through it. Usually, Resistors have a specified number for energy blocking that, in general, doesn't change. However, the light-dependent resistors are resistors that can change how much energy it blocks according to how much light it receives, changing its resistance. Luckily, resistance is something that we can indirectly measure with an Arduino board. And that takes us to the next step of this project the electronics. The controllers and battery pack are a group of electronics devices that makes the generated energy stable enough to be used to charge the batteries, 
turn on the lights and the USB charger. First, we need to get the energy generated by the wind turbine motor and the solar panels and pass it through an energy regulator. This way, it can be used to charge the batteries. After that, the Arduino and the servo motors need some power to work, and it's get using the battery pack and regulating its voltage using another energy regulator. The LED light, USB charging, and the 12 volt output port are also connected to the battery pack. And the last one is the battery level indicator that is connected to the battery pack too. The battery pack is the heart of this project. The configuration of it is a 12 volt and 5.2 amps. It's not a huge battery pack capacity, but it's easy to improve it as you wish. You just need to add more batteries to it as it has plenty of free space inside of the power station. It also has a BMS3S protective board to make everything works fine and safe. It's important to isolate the board from any accidental shortcut. A silver tape can handle this job. All the boards were glued into the battery pack with some hot glue and, in a first look, it seems just a bunch of wires together. Well, in a second look, it keeps looking the same but I promise that it does exactly what I told you before. To control all the systems, we need a control panel. It was built to turn on and off all the systems of the power station. That helps to save some energy from the batteries when it's not charging or in use. After this step, we are good to go to the last part, the main body. Finally, the main body was built using a PVC pipe, as shown before. It holds all the devices inside it and works as a support, making everything stable. First, it was prepared removing all the needed spots to include all the panels, wind turbine, solar panels and supports. Some of the protections can be also cut in this step. All the edges were sanded to make it as smooth as possible and don't mess up the next steps. After that, the wires that will connect the solar panel system into the electronics need to be prepared. All the wires were glued in place and secured with some silver tape. It will prevent the cables to touch the wind turbine when it spins. It could reduce a little bit the blade speeds, and we don't want that. Now, we are ready to insert the wind turbine inside the PVC pipe. The wood discs will help to make just the right support to it. One will hold the motor and the other one will hold the bearing wheel. The bearing wheel will be screwed in place to make it steady. Lots of attention are needed to make everything very well centralized. Any misalignment will result in some trouble when the wind turbine begins to spin. The support discs were also fixed in place with some screws. To give a nice look to the power station, I used a camouflage vinyl cover. It gives a surprisingly professional look to it. The gluing process of the vinyl cover was quite simple. As it has adhesive tape in the back side of it, you just need to take care of the bubbles and put the extra parts with an utility blade. If you are going to replicate this project at home, of course, you can use any pattern of vinyl cover that you would like to. All the protections will need something to hold it in place. I use some velcro to do it. As it has adhesive in the back side, it's really simple to install. After concluding the velcro installation, it's time to fix the control panel in place. I use some screws, so when necessary, I can remove it to make some maintenance. As you can see, I'm not really good in cable management but the back panel holds all the electronics that we soldered before and is also screwed in place. The whole solar system is now ready to be installed in the top part of the power station. As shown before, it can track the light direction and move the panels around to increase the efficiency of energy generation. Let's take a look of how does it works. The working principle for this solar tracking device is quite simple. As I told you before, the LDRs are resistors that can change its resistance according to the light that it captures. 
As the LDRs are positioned in different quadrants, you can measure the average light of the right and left side and on the top and under part of it. If the left side gets darker because some shadows are above it, the Arduino read the signals coming from the resistors and send a command to the motor to turn to right. This way, the whole system goes to the light direction. The same occurs when the right side gets darker. When the panels are not in use and the solar tracker is turned off, it can be disassembled, releasing the rubber strings that holds it open. As it needs some protection, another part of PVC pipe was used to make it safe. The supports of the power station can now be installed. It will be necessary to hold it in place when the wind is too strong. The spikes that will be used to sustain it on the ground can be fixed in place too. And the last protection to be installed are the wind turbine cover that was also made with a segment of PVC pipe. And that's it! Now you can enjoy your camping or hiking with a power station that can charge itself using wind and solar energy and never take the risk of running out of energy anymore. Hope you enjoyed this project. For more content like this, don't forget to follow the channel. All the plans to build this do-it-yourself project are in the video description. See you in the next project.